Cheers, folks. And today we're talking about this. First published in 1973 by Harry N. Abrams, The Art of Walt Disney is one of the most successful and influential illustrated art books on American popular culture ever published. This book was first to reveal the wealth of concept art, animation drawings, and archival material created in the course of the animated films. Um, it, and it is absolutely an, an exquisite, astonishing masterpiece. This book features some of the most amazing concept art found in the ARL, the Disney Animation Research Library. I'll give you a little backstory as to why I have this book and why I think it's so great. So, when I was a kid, underneath my grandparents' um, coffee table sat this book, one of many books underneath there. And so, what I did was I would always use this as my drawing Bible. So, I'd open it up and see the pictures, get inspired gets so jazzed about drawing that I would just go ahead and copy the pictures, get a feel for Disney's style, be so influenced by it. Uh, it was just excellent. I would do that uh, all the time. You could find me, they'd come downstairs and say, it's time to go home from grandma's house. And I'd be looking at the book, drawing, watch it with the TV in front of me. I just, as a kid, that's like an unforgettable memory for me. I would flip through the pages and see all these different things. I always thought it was some grand, grand book that um, my grandparents had because I saw them as such role models and that this Walt Disney must be a role model. He seems really cool. It's fun. I love all the movies. I love his signature on the side. Um, I, I was such a fan of, of, of that gold text writing and now to have this book again is, is, is a, an amazing feat for me creatively as an artist. If you don't know, I'm an artist and children's book illustrator, and finding inspiration from Walt Disney's features is a big part of what I do day to day. It really, really drives me and inspires me, all the features. I just watch the animation and I'm captivated all over again like I'm a kid. So what happened was, down the road I asked my aunt, where did this book go? I'm, I would love to look at it again after um, so many years had went by, I had grown up, and she had told me, Unfortunately, there was a flood in the basement where the TV was and everything. It was a ranch house style with a basement fully redone and it, the water got in. The sub pump um, backfired and water just got everything soaked, including this book. And I was really upset. I was sad about it. But later that, that year and that Christmas under that tree, Stephanie, Stephanie got me this book. This exact book was under the tree with the um with the the mickey popped out and cardboard on it nothing on the front this was exactly the book and i i hugged her and thanked her everything from the interior of it all the little page chapters embroidered in gold and embossed is just such high caliber so sophisticated for the walt disney company to have a book like this in their library for artists uh, to, it's basically like taking a trip to the ARL. You get jazzed about the artwork. You get completely immersed in the artwork and the conceptual design and rich um, sort of sort of mastery of the craft that Walt Disney's nine old men and company would produce throughout those years of animation. It's just an exceptional breath of work for the Walt Disney Company to have from say 1920 to 1960. It's an immense library and it's all in here. It starts out with Walt's early life and goes into films like Steamboat Willie and the creation of Mickey and then it goes into Bambi and it goes into Pinocchio from there. The Seven Dwarfs and the concept art for all that and it's just it is great. It is amazing concept art and inspired me. I thought, this is so different. There's nothing like this in the world that I've seen. And so accessible to kids, accessible to children. It's what's driven me to this day as an artist. And another great aspect that's unique to this book is that it's got these pull-out storybook kind of flaps of pages that pull out in the title page. You'll see and when you got a vast Disney grouping of characters in the front there and sometimes inside the book at random points it seems there's just a vast 
like spread of artwork over these big pullouts. And you get things like Jiminy Cricket, like looking at the eye of Monstro, and you get, um, you know, big the sweeping thing that you see in the beginning of uh, Pinocchio, that that's that night nighttime scape scene of Italy. Uh, it's just beautiful, beautiful background artwork that is showcased in this book, in flaps and pullouts. It's just remarkable. Honestly, guys, I'm not a big reader, and you don't really have to read this book to get a lot out of it. You really don't. I mean, yes, I do read. I like biographies and all, all that stuff. There are words in it, but not a, an exceptional amount of words. It goes into the later on processings of the park and what influenced Walt and the less the five lessons of the parks. All that sort of stuff that Walt intended um, people to get out of them. And then it goes into the animatronics and how he crafted that and had his Imagineers go ahead and, um, and and create all that early animatronics of the Disney age. As a kid, I was always a little freaked out about the animatronics. I was a little bit like, this is kind of scary to see all the robotics inside that the pictures depict all the robotics inside of the animatronics, Mr. Lincoln and all that kind of stuff and, and how that came to be. It is one of the most influential deep dives on the Walt Disney Company in its early formations. And there's a lot to sink your teeth in and dive into as a young artist who's budding off the inspiration of Walt Disney and what he did. More importantly, what his nine old men did. That is the fact that he found them and that they were so, so capable and able to create those characters, those designs of those characters, and not only create the characters in the way that they look and that we know, but make the move. <laughs> but make the move. <laughs> that is just insane and great. So with that being said, you could pick up one of these for either $30 to $60 depending. This is a original copy. This is one of the original copies because sometimes you'll find there's words over top this. This cardboard Mickey cutout is not present. It is just a flat Mickey. Um, so just look out for that if you're going to purchase this book. I would suggest you get this one. Opening this up on Christmas morning, I just opened it up and, and I, I was such a wave of nostalgia passed over me as I was instantly brought back to my childhood and I smelled the inside of the book. You can't help it. It's so old. It just, you, you smell it. And I, it, I was like, wow, I'm at my grandparents' house drawing again, uh, learning how to draw, self-teaching myself based on what the nine old men were creating at the time for Walt Disney himself. With that being said, that's going to do it for this episode. I highly recommend this book. Pick it up if you can. If you want to comment below and let me know what your favorite Disney book is, I'd be happy to know. And you can find me lounging to a melody and reading this book. Take care. Hey guys, and thank you for tuning in for this episode. If you want to follow me on Instagram, it's Manza Media Art and Manza Media on every other platform. If you like prints, I have an Etsy shop. If you want to buy some of my original artwork and fan artwork, I encourage you to like and subscribe and uh, give it a big thumbs up. Thank you.